fucking. Seriously, this is not. Don't let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> don't let the chicken <laughs> out of the hen house. Don't let the clap out of the bag. All right. Too relaxed. Back with BS uh, with Barker Barrett. One only. Barker has been skating quite a bit, and he's been uh, skating a spot called Rockridge. He's sort of the mayor of Rockridge um, at this point, and there's been a bunch of cool footage of him just doing tons of rad slappy variations and looking like you're having a great time. Oh, it's miserable. And, and so... <laughs> It's a scene, man. It's a scene. It gets sessioned. Like it's, it's a full-on spot. Who are the locals? Shout out some locals. Quiggle, Griffin, Stevel, the whole Unity crew. Yeah. The whole 510 crew. Cher and Christian. And uh, it's endless. It's, it's so many different crews that come together. There's a, uh, a real harmony at that spot. And that's just another aspect of skating that's so rad. It's just... Everyone's welcome. It's kind of like, I mean. Come get hurt. <laughs> when I went growing up, you were a skateboarder and that made you an outcast. Kind of like an undefinable outcast. So any sort of, the way that people would deal with you, they didn't know why they were angry at you. They didn't know how to categorize you. You were a skateboarder, so you were an outcast. Now with skateboarding becoming so like, diverse and you know all-encompassing you know you've got all these different factions within skateboarding it's like the rest of the world yeah you know there's yeah. there are totally. different you know for a while there it wasn't all that awesome between different yeah. groups of skateboarders and i love the fact that this place is like it is the switzerland of skateboarding yeah yeah you spent most of your time in pa right the 70s concrete skate park years were spent in Virginia okay. when the park was open for two years. And then BMX happened and, you know, that's how you got to the 7-Eleven and skateboards kind of disappeared yeah. from the East Coast a little bit for a 12 year old. What was it, 83, 84? I mean, I, somewhere I've got photos. I graduated eighth grade on a Santa Cruz street skate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is insane. Yeah. But so it was, it was always there, and then moving to Pennsylvania, for whatever reason, and through riding bikes, a friend of mine and I, we built uh, half pipes in our backyard, which were vert half pipes. Mine was six and a half foot high to vert, and his was six foot eight with eight inches of vert. So it was six foot tranny, eight inches of vert, 16 feet wide with a channel. Amazing. And the channel, you almost rubbed your board going down the down, going down the roll in. <laughs> going down the roll in was scarier than dropping in on that ramp. That was like the transitioning back and forth, because street skating was kind of few and far between where we lived directly until we were taking trains and driving to Philly, and then, you know, Philly was. The beginning, and then once we started realizing the economy of going to New York, and also the friends we made in New York, it was a lot easier to go there. How old were you when you, when you not only you realized um, that there's a whole nother world out there other, other than your backyard, right, with a ramp, but you know, really took the street skating again. And so you went to Philly and you probably had these experiences. Did you meet anyone specific in Philly? Like, Well, I mean, you know, what's funny is like we, we had a shop team, we, Team Toxic was like a- Team Toxic. It was a demo team. Nuke baby. Yeah. Oh yeah, pre-nuke baby, gamma reactor. Denny Reardon, you know, uh, yeah. Josh Marlowe, Brand X, Kryptonics, yeah. and, um, Brand X. And, and Toxic were like three brands that were under that umbrella, somehow based out of Ocean City, Maryland. And, you know, one of our local skate shops was one of their hubs, uh, Norm, Norm Hamilton. Norm. He put together, you know, this Team Toxic team and it was you know sean miller john Wynn, rob crow myself you know at that time you know it's like 
I don't even know how that stuff worked, but you know, Airwalk sponsored, Swatch sponsored, Life's a Beach sponsored, right. you know, just in that heyday of throwing brands at people. Yeah. You know, and we had a white van with a jump ramp and we do parking lot demos with a jump ramp. And were you on brand X or were you or just I like toxic? I you know, this is I like Brand I'd X like, actually had some rad rides. Well, you know what's right? funny like, is I'd like to think that I was on Brand X, and I always chose those boards when I had that chance, just to lay the groundwork to become a hipster before <laughs> hipsters were called hipsters. <laughs> like, yeah, we all ride for Toxic, but I ride for Brand X, right? So, <laughs> you know, and then I was rudely awakened to when I came out here, when I uh, graduated high school and came out and stayed in Oakland for a month and skated SF. Every day for a month, I went down to Santa Barbara, which is where Brand X's P.O. box was. Oh. That's Just a P.O. box. Because it was all... Sorry. So you it showed was, up to the P.O. box? It was all Atlantic skates. <laughs> looking at the, looking at the P.O. Looking box. In, I was looking in, in the, the little mica window the key next hole. to the dial. Could I get a new board? Yeah. Anyone in there? I heard John Detman comes here. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're old enough now, you're getting around. So when did you first go to New York and like, and when you started going up there, who did you end up meeting first? Like out of the shut crew, right? Because what's funny is I think it. I'm almost positive and fuzzy memory. I realize I don't, my, uh, my mind is an overwatered garden and I literally, I, I, I've, I've overserved myself over the years. It's and I do not, it's, yes, chronology is not my long suit. Um, but there is a, there's footage from an ocean that I have from an ocean city, Maryland contest, which is after I got back from being in San Francisco and it was one of the premieres of shut as a thing at that contest, Rodney skating with an arm cast. Jeremy was still on Dogtown. I don't even think Sheffy was on yet. Kamal Patton was on, Beasley was still with us. I think, if again, memory serves, that contest was the catalyst to my relationship with Shut. So that would be, you know, late summer of 87. It's again fuzzy. I think I moved to San Francisco 89, 90. Yeah. Somewhere, I drove back and forth across country so many times for work that I don't even know when I actually settled here. We'd go to New York after that point. So you go you go to New York and who did you go with? Like who was, did you have like a friend that you skated with all the time or a couple guys or? There were Brooklyn Bridge contests that we'd go up for, which also was a little bit of a, a precursor maybe to that Ocean City, Maryland contest. We'd go up as Team Toxic and skate those and gotcha. this, that, and the other thing. But they were definitely, those were <clears throat> colliding worlds. Yeah. Um, it was after that, my friend Mark Pagurski, who actually came out to San Francisco with me in 87, more often than not, because I didn't, I didn't get a driver's license until I was like 19, we would take a train and stay at Jeremy's house, at Jeremy Henderson's, and uh, on the Lower East Side, which was... Um, Super safe at that point in time. It was an experience. <laughs> and especially, you know, in, not in the age of cell phones and when you would show up there with a backpack planning to stay a week and there's no answer at his place and you're just like, uh, you're, I don't know, I'm not sure what to do right now. And you try to get up, the, we put our bags on the fire escape one time and, and used a, a pay phone. We didn't use the pay phone because the person who was on the pay phone was apparently on the pay phone too long for the person who was behind them. So the person behind them extended a box cutter as far as it went and just started slashing at them. And we were like, we'll just go wait for, well, we're good. Old New York. We're good. Because <laughs> they wanted to use their phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. A big Sometimes deal. you got to do it. I know. So you're going up to New York, you're skating, and you end up skating with all the Shut guys, I'd imagine, right? Yeah. And hanging out. And then you got put on, you, were, you rode for Shut, right? Mm -hmm. You got put on. Was there something specific, a specific moment in time when they put you on? Because shut, so my my perception of what shut was was mm -hmm. like, it was most hardcore skate company on the East Coast. It was, but it was like not Dogtown, but it was more like street skating in San Francisco. 
and all the guys I skated with, you know, all the all the usual suspects. But it was the East Coast version, which was much fucking, just you know, gnarlier. It was East Coast urban Dogtown. Yeah. I mean, like. But but no, but but we can't say Dogtown in the sense because no, 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 no those motherfuckers surfed. Well, that's where it's East Coast. Well, you know what I, mean? I mean, they, you know, no, no, but I, and so I start, I start going into like, I, I'm imagining. It, it, just, it just was, it was the super urban, like, crew. What's funny is like, the time that Shut was emerging was right there when Public Enemy lyrics exactly. made sense. Exactly. When, when Chuck D says, you know, Radio suckers never play me is when shut was coming up, which is when hip hop was punk rock. Like exactly, it, you this was not going to get played. I mean, you know, it takes two to make a thing go right was the only thing you heard on the radio, yeah. and you heard it all day, <laughs> like just with like stingers for different <laughs> things that were happening that they weren't going to play on the radio. But I mean, also like you know, they were the shop on uh, Mott Street, Sonic Youth had a practice space in this building and they used to legally spray boards because, and that's, I think that was where I was, there was another, in the punk rock aspect of Dogtown, just the illegal aspect of it, sure. like. Well, just the fuck you DIY sort of approach. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can't, you know, just there's poles in the ceiling with unspooled uh, wire coat hangers just hung through the mounting holes of boards and just That's giving them that Dogtown fucking yeah, outside the, the spray. sunburst. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was a huge fan of Shut, man. Like, because, you know, when I was, at, at the same time, I was super into hip hop when hip hop really came from the East Coast out here and I'd seen Shut and Shut was all about, I mean, it was straight New York. Yeah. And I, and I loved everything coming out of New York. I was a, I was a fan. And if I didn't ride, I had said, I think I told Rodney once, I was like, if I, don't, if I didn't ride with Powell, I'd ride for Shut. That was my favorite. I, I have a photo of me. I used to wear that super bad, the James Brown oh, yeah. one, all the time. Yeah. I wish I still had it. I, I still have one. And I can't, and I mean, I guess there was a time where I wore extra large shirts when I was not extra large, because I have been <laughs> extra large in my, in my time. I've been extra large, but... Uh, it's it's a great shirt that will never be worn. So you're you're you got on shut. You're riding for shut. Um, do you have any good? Do you have any good stories about like skating with those dudes in the city or anything that is that stuck out to you at the time? It was just like wow, that was fucking crazy. Like any anything from that era. What's funny is I I don't even know where I I wasn't around for two of the West Coast magazines their whole New York articles. I think I got a photo on one of them and, and was when Tobin was staying at my, he came and stayed at my parents' house back in the day and we shot a lip slide photo and it got thrown into something. But there was, they did the Thrasher New York thing and then, uh, I don't even remember, but I, I, I wasn't there for that. But I, you can't even like, you know what? Okay, so Harlem Banks, we go out to Harlem Banks when Tobin was in town and Tobin's in town, we're going to Harlem Banks and for whatever reason, it's a bit larger of a crew than, which is already probably a bad idea. Yeah. I think someone's board, someone's board did get away from him and actually ripped uh, an older woman's stocking, which Ooh. was enough. And I mean, there was a moment there, there's a moment where, you know, it's like that, like the, the soccer stadium emptying out. Like you can just feel like, I don't know why I'm going this way, but I'm going this way. And this, cause it was a park where a lot of people hung out yeah, and just did whatever they were doing. And once something like that happened, they had something else to do. And that was to start swarming yeah. on the 12, Young. mostly young white kids yeah. who showed up to skate their park. And it was like, we are out. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that was one of those times where you, you and your friends are pushing for like at least five blocks and not looking back and not even checking with anyone. If, like, are we good? Yeah. Like, you're just pushing. Yeah, I'm, I need to get out of here alive. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing about 
you know, kids who grow up in, in less kind of urban environments and they're, and they're naive to that stuff. And it was right around the time Gons had his, there was a, someone had, someone, whatever, so it's just been posted somewhere. The 8th Street rail was a rail that got knobbed immediately because Gons had this Vision Streetwear night commercial where he just, he shut the rail down in probably 87 in like the full all over print. Yeah. Yeah. Shorts and <laughs> button down, you know, board slide, board slide the rail, 50, 50, the rail and front side 50 and front side. 180 back 50, 50, that one. No, 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 no. It's, time. it's straight board slide 50, 50 and front board. But during that time being at Jeremy's and Gons was there, I remember going out of Jeremy's house and watch it, just watching this dude, Chinese Ollie off a padlock like riding up onto a grate. You know the padlock is in the middle of the grate. Yeah. So you're you've you've already ridden onto Gagunk and now you're on like nothing land and and hits this padlock and just lands on the other side of it and you're this this is the this is how my morning starts. <laughs> just seeing this, like watching those little Sims Roccos just doink. And you're just it's it, then we're off. Yeah. We're going to go skating now. Yeah. So, shut. Yes. You, okay, you're on the East Coast. You're riding for shut. Shut stopped making boards, went out of business or, or something. Um, and, and, it's fuzzy. Well, yeah. So, something happened. Yeah. You stopped riding for him, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But was your next company planet earth yeah it is right yeah Ooh, look at that a couple yeah. brain cells yeah. left not many um, <laughs> um so how did you get on planet earth were you, did you come to california or or were you back east i was back east when did you turn pro let me go let me reel that back real quick was it for planet earth or was it were you pro for shut it was for shut okay after the 89 am finals and I think, again, fuzzy math and not super good at these numbers, there was the, the first NSA pro contest of the year was in the much lauded old Del Mar skate park parking lot. Yeah. Where they built a vert ramp and a really, really stellar little street set up. Yeah. It just so happened that year there were more new pros that year that they had like a bit of a crisis about how they were going to go throughout the year with contests. And they came up with the idea of a 40 cut. You know, here's the contest and we're gonna do the contest. But if you make the top 40, you are then invited to the next contest, right. which happened to be the Hawaii contest. So it was that contest that was my first pro contest, which was wild. Yeah. I seen Sheffy half cab um, a barrier at that contest, like one of the the, the metal barriers. Yeah. I, I seriously I, could not even comprehend it. You know the Didn't funny, the sense. raddest thing is that like toward you know right around that time and and toward the end of my time on shut and the end of Sheffy's time on on shut, we ended up spending a lot of time together, going on tour together. We went on a Midwest tour with like, I mean, Chris Cook, Bill Danforth, Hensley, Ortega, Ray Simmons, Ron Allen. What company was that? It was Cow Skates. Oh. It was Cow Skates became a partner and shut, okay. you know, at that point. Gotcha. But um, no, it was- That's a crew. It was nuts. It was nuts, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what's happening now? So you turned pro at that contest? Yes. For shut? Yeah. And then shut, whatever happened there, don't quite know. Yeah. Um, how did, who approached you for Planet Earth and then, and then take, me, take me down the Planet Earth road real quick? It was uh, Buster Halterman. Yeah. Crossbone leans. Forget yeah. it. Forget, I mean, like sweepers or anything. anything. It's so insane. I know. Really double jointed and like exploited double jointed. Yeah. I think part of it, you know, a little bit of it could have been helped by the Mike Ternowski connection with going on the H Street tours. Oh, okay. You know, so there's a familiarity there.
but Buster Halterman for sure. And then, um, I mean, Chris Miller is just one of the best. Hit it like instantly hit hit it off there. It was such a weird time. Everyone had left shut at this point. Sheffy had left for life. Chris and and Bill had left for World Industries. Kepper left for Think. Like, if I'm honest, I felt a little disingenuous being this kind of more Caucasian skate park mini ramp skater riding for this urban. I could have been talking myself into that as being a justification for leaving as well. I was struggling. Yeah. You know, it just didn't feel right. I didn't make any money doing changing, uh, uh, switching. I made less money switching. But also, you know... Especially at that time, less than nothing is... Well, I was, yeah, I was make yes. I also told myself, like, you know, they need this money. I don't need... They don't need to pay me. I don't know. Eh, you know, hey, we don't know. Choose your own adventure book. I can't go back. I burned those pages. <laughs> those pages are burned. I don't even know. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was, uh, that was a decision that was made at a time when it was made. Yes. That seemed necessary and prudent. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Planet Earth was, was more <coughs> of... Um, had more money behind it, right? Well, so, we, at the t- at the mm. time, but here's the thing: with the coolest thing about Planet Earth at that moment, I it think. was more because, visibility. Because it was in California, it was connected, and also because it was under H Street's umbrella. Yeah, <clears throat> it had photographers at the ready. Yeah, it had uh, the whole the, more, the infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. And also, kind of getting in on that ground floor of, I mean, it was kind of like a weird dream. Like, there's, here's Chris Miller, and Eric Juden. Because I don't even think Buster was pro at the time. Like, he was an amateur, I Probably. think, at that time. Yeah. So it was Eric Juden, Chris Miller, Brian Lottie, and myself. And it's just like, this is ridiculous. Are yeah. you kidding me? Like, that's nuts. Yeah, amazing. How long were you on planet Earth for? Till I want to say around 93-ish. Were you out here at that point? You were, right? Oh, yeah. But- the whole time, Whitehead did my second planet earth graphic i did not know that but well because it it was it was essentially drawn as a future tattoo it was a line drawing when i sent it to chris he ended up doing a painting of it and had me go down and sin took pictures of it it was like when everyone had to have an everslick which i'm not sure which finger i'd cut off to (laughs) never ride an everslick again but it's one of one of the fingers i have is to erase that period. It was rough. But anyway, that's how that ended up. And it was uh, like cartoon boxes, clouds, and a hand, and a rope coming down off the nose. Oh, yeah, okay. Guy at the end of his rope yeah. sort of situation. But it was cool because I got to go hang out with Sin and hang out in his crazy world. Yeah. Which was awesome. Yeah. He's... Rest in peace, right? Rest in peace. Which is a bummer. So you did the Planet Earth thing, and I know you. I don't. You didn't quit skating necessarily or anything, but you, after Planet Earth, what what what, what was after Planet Earth? You 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 started working early on for Woodward and stuff. I don't well, know. No, what era I mean, that was. I had. A, I was working antique auctions for my dad twice That's a year. Right. That's right. And I ended up missing a lot of different right. events and stuff because when you know. I remember. I remember you were living here, and you'd, and you'd be like, you'd split to go yeah. to go work with your dad. And, yeah, I'd and, take and, off. Yeah, and do that. I drive like a season or something, right? Well, I the actual work of the auctions lasted like two weeks, and it was a big chunk of money I could make because the hours were crazy. But in driving cross country to do that, you're you're essentially it's three weeks. Yeah, because it's a sure. it's a three day straight through drive, sleeping in your car on either side. So I'd, I'd miss out on certain things just to kind of keep the, the wheels rolling. Of course. After Planet Earth, Rodney and Dan Zimmer came out and stayed with me and we started Zoo York. 